come to the last month, uh, December, and we're stepping into 2021. Has our relationship with God this year gone deeper or further apart? Has we been set free by this gospel that we are preaching this year? That's creation, liberation, and transformation. Today, this, as we go through the second part of James 2, James is actually talking, is address, addressing these uh, issues to the newly converted Christians, Jewish Christians back then, who are so currently living after knowing the salvation of Christ, that is through faith. So we're going to go through this sermon today by asking some questions. Can faith alone save us? And what's salvation? What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but have no works? Can faith save him? Let's pray together as we go into this sermon today. Lord, we know in this year, you are always there. You are sending your Holy Spirit. You are guiding us with your angels. You are opening our eyes to follow you. And we thank you for this. And we thank you because we have this spiritual home that we are here together, gathering every week. No matter how hard life is, we are still here holding one another and having you in our center. And we want to open our eyes, open our heart to receive this word, this wisdom from you that we could have reflection in our life, that we could go deeper in the relationship with you and the body of Christ around us. We want to submit ourselves unto you, guide us, let us live here and now in order to re receive this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, right here, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but have no words? Can faith save him? Right here, this prophet, it's something um, very special because in Christianity, we seldom talk about prophet. It's in the business world where we mostly look into prophet. But right here, James is actually telling us by placing our faith, it could bring us profit. Does faith without work profit? Profit means application. It has usage. It has practical meaning. For example, today we always see someone sneezing, hachil around us, and we say, God bless you. And what's the difference between someone sneezing and you give them a tissue paper and say, God bless you? Is there a difference in that? Definitely, there is a difference by you giving something, by you putting your action in faith. Rather than just saying, God bless you, we give something in action with our faith. Our faith. And in, right here, it talks about faith with actions is going to bring profit. Same goes to my testimony this year. As I was keep looking forward for my internship, I was looking around sending applications. And because of this action, I have faith in God definitely, but it requires action. So I went through uh, in the interviews and in the end, finally I got my internship. Right now I'm doing my work. So what about you guys? Are you placing your faith with work in achieving what you want? Another question right here, James give is that can faith without work save? We're gonna carry this question and go on and as we continue and we'll look back into this. The next scripture tells us, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of any food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warm and be filled, but you do not give them the things they are needed for the body, what does it profit? That's also by faith itself. It doesn't have works. It's dead. You know, in Malaysia, as we are in the hawker center or we are outside, there's going to be a lot of people coming. That there's going to be beggars coming you to ask for money. There's going to be someone here to sell you tissue paper. And there's going to be people coming towards you to ask for donation and a lot of stuff like that. 
And I always wonder, what would Jesus do in, the, in that situation? Is Jesus going to heal the person? Is Jesus going to um, buy the tissue paper from them? Is D Jesus going to give the beggars money? I, I've always had this question, and I finally come out with one of my limited conclusion is that I think Jesus would definitely um, do something about it. But for myself, whenever someone comes to me selling tissue paper with me being affordable, I would try my best to support them because they are not asking money without doing anything. And for those who come to ask money from you, I would think that I was always want to prepare a packs of these small tissue papers and really give them one and by paying them one ringgit, you know, to teach them how to make a living by doing this. <clears throat> and also in our family members or even our church members, when they come to us, saying they are in need of something. How do we respond? Right here, James telling us that faith without work is dead. In other words, faith is made complete by work. For example, my application to my work, it was made complete when I placed my faith and action. And it also tells us right here that other than spiritual needs, in church, we always look into the spiritual needs. But we do have human basic needs that could be food, that could be accommodation and money, for example, for our ministries. As GSKL right now is hosting this uh, funding, we need money for ministries. And how are we going to place our faith? Are we going to support by Donating our talent, donating our time, or donating our money? This is a good question for us to ponder. Next, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Right here, we could imagine James in the synagogue having this opponent standing up, challenging him, saying, hey, James, you say so much, but we can't see the faith. Can you show us the faith? Even though I know you can't, you know, faith is not going to be seen. Only God can see our faith, but the faith that has work can be seen by human. For example, GSKL, we have this faith, we want to do something in Malaysia. We want to create this safe space. We want to create a cure emergency shelter for those who are in need. We want to create a medication retreat. We want to create something counseling for people around us in our community, especially. But in order for us, in order for others to see our faith, we have to do something that's through the work. And I'm very blessed to have this church that we all place our work together, working tirelessly to form this place to go towards this place. And by doing so, our faith is seen because of our work by others. And then we'll be justified by what we do in order to be called righteous or a friend of God. I will continue like this, you see, but do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? This continue to say how Abraham offers his only child on the altar as his actions was made perfect and his faith was mature. And then Abraham was seen by others by his action of sacrificing his son on the altar. Then he was called righteous and then he was justified and be called a friend of God. So we cannot be justified by faith alone, and we are justified by our work. Like what I mentioned just now in John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I believe in GSKL, we all are a friend of God by doing what God's wanting to do in Malaysia, by us going towards this placing our action, we are creating something right here. And with faith, 
it's going to be perfect by our work and we will be justified and then called righteous. That's a friend of God. We always sing a song back then in our Holy Communion scene. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. When we are creators of justice, joy, peace and compassion. By placing our faith in action, here, that's the important points which I reached out just now. That is, our faith is going to bring profit. Our faith is going to make complete and mature to be seen by God and human and then to be justified and be called righteous. So what is the relationship between faith and salvation? It's my first time talking about salvation in a sermon. I never talk about salvation. Lots of people could think when they hear the word salvation, it could be lead to heaven. Oh, you'll be saved. You'll be going to heaven. You're not going to hell. But is that true? Salvation, right here in Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, this was written by Paul. For, grace, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It's the gift of God not of words, so that no one should boast. And then continue wordsly, it says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, for God prepared beforehand that we could walk in them. There's a very long historical debate between Apostle Paul and James the Just about salvation. But James is not here to contradict what Apostle Paul is saying. Apostle Paul is saying that we are safe in this image, which I draw by myself. We are safe, not of works. We are safe by grace, through faith. But, say, but a saving faith will have works that accompany it. And right here, James is telling us that the faith that saves has good work with it. So this blue part is what James emphasizes here. Grace is from God, but we need to place our faith in it to be safe. And by this, in order to make our faith not dead, to be a living faith, we have to place our work. We have to do something. As what Paul here says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we could walk with them. We got to do something like what we are doing right now. So what is salvation? Salvation in Eastern Orthodox, it means enlightenment. And the closest word that we can find in the English dictionary right now is transformation. What does it mean by this transformation? Is that our self, our personal life could be transformed. That's one of the gospel of this year. Creation, liberation, and transformation. And transformation now, it leads us, it means salvation. And another thing is that our world, our society. So, by having this transformation, it means that someone is blind, can see. From death to life, from anxiety to compassion, from injustice to justice, and etc. So what's stopping us from having this transformative life? You know, we all want to change. We all want to, some of us might not be happy of our life right now. Some are happy, which is good. But if you want to break through, if you want to change in life, what are you going to do? And we have to know what's stopping us from having this transformative life and how to be safe, which means how to live a transformative life. I'm now going to the application part because we believe Christianity is all about application in our life. That is going to bring us profit. 
Number one, we always mention about being conscious, being aware in our church. But one of the very important thing is that we need to train our subconscious mind. Sigmund Freud, uh, if you study psychology, you know him. He's the one who come up with this three um, ideology about our mind separated into conscious mind, subconscious and unconscious mind state. And when we are thinking, when we are doing something in awareness, we are consciously. But what about subconscious? Subconscious is like we are driving. We don't have to, we you still can do other stuff. We can talk to our friend because our subconscious is leading us. But remember when you learn driving at first, you are using lots of your attention, all your body strength to focus on the driving. You are using your different parts consciously until a time where we are trained, our behavior has changed, we can do it subconsciously. So right here, we have to be mindful and aware to train our behavior because why, why are we not achieving a transformative life? Why are we not able to change something is that we know we, what we want to do. We know what is right. We know we always in the state of we know, but our body, our flesh is lazy. We are not training ourselves. So right here, we have to start to train our subconscious to be mindful. You can do meditation. Recently, we had a body of Christ in our midst. We're having sleepwalking. And this is very shocking. He went out of his room and then he came to realize that means he came to aware and be conscious when he was outside the room trying to open his door room while he was supposed to be sleeping inside. So we could know that how powerful is our subconscious mind state that it could lead our life most of the time. So we don't want to be a slave to our subconscious mind state. We want to be conscious. One of the way is through meditation. We are focusing, we are using our conscious mind state. We are aware of what we are doing and, and speaking in our life so that we can train our subconscious and we will not be led merely and deadly by our subconscious. Next is to question our faith. See, just now I mentioned about that's actually James uses two um, person, one is Rahab and one is Abraham to talk about them placing their faith in action. And today I'm just going to talk about Abraham. Do you think that God really want Abraham to sacrifice his only son? This is a very long debate uh, in between all of worlds in um, Jewish community, in Christian communities or even Islamic community. And right here, I look through the Jewish, Jewish um, context. And I'm going to share two ideology here. One is from the Jewish Publication Society. That is the Jewish will suggest that Abraham's action of sacrificing Isaac, that seems real, was actually his way of testing God. And that is why here I mentioned we have to question our faith. Why? As Abraham has previously argued with God to save lives in Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by God in the Old Testament. And by his action of silently seems to be, you know, to follow God's instruction to kill Isaac. Abraham was actually putting pressure on God to act in a moral way to preserve life. So right here, Abraham was actually challenging his own perspective of God, his faith and his belief of this God. In all of us here, we all have a different image of God in us. And this all is going to bring us closer to the image of God. But having this different mindset of God, as we go, as we mature in our Christian journey, we are going to know God more and we we are going to one step closer to the truth that is going to set us free and going to give us freedom, joy, and peace. So Abraham right here, he could be challenging his own perspective of God. And there's more evidence 
showing that Abraham was not actually sacrificed his own son coming from Genesis 22.5, where Abraham, we all can read together, where Abraham said to his servants, you stay here with the ass, that's the donkey. The boy and I will go up there. We will worship God and we will re return to you. By saying we, as opposed to I, he meant that they, both of them, will return. Thus, he did not believe that Isaac would be a sacrifice in the end. And in, in another Jewish uh, publication, in the binding of Isaac, religious murders Kabbalah by Lipton Bovdov, he argues that Abraham never actually intended to actually sacrifice his son. He had faith that God had no intention to do so as well. Isaac's death is never a possibility. And God's command to Abraham was specific. That is to Isaac has to be raised up as an offering. When we are singing worship, most of the time in GSKL, we are teaching us that we want to sacrifice ourselves as a living offering. And this is what it means. And God will use this opportunity by the incident of Abraham and Isaac to teach humankind that once and for all, human sacrifice and child sacrifice is not acceptable. I that we never believe God will want us to sacrifice our life uh, as in this kind of human sacrificial or child sacrificial that goes to this extreme. It's like the some of the religious extremists doing and killing people around us. So the ultimate truth is gonna set us free, gonna, gonna give us joys, peace, and hope. So today, I wanna ask us, are we there to question our faith? Are we there enough to question our belief system? And this, we are working on a perspective wise. We have to constantly question our faith so that we can improve as a Christian. And next, the last point is through prayer. You see, Christian life is our branding of Christianity. Christian life is by prayer. Do you pray enough? Do you place your faith when we pray? Do we spend quiet time? Do we spend quality time with God and ourselves, like in the war room, to pray? and to pray with faith in action. You see, we pray with faith, but we need to do action so that God is gonna help us in achieving what we wanna do or what God has placed in our heart. And then we can start to give thanks when we pray. See, lots of people might be I, in our cell group, we have people finding job at this time we could start to give thanks and have this kind of faith that we will eventually get it. Or we could submit this onto God's hand by placing our faith in action. All of that will just come eventually when we believe. Here it says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added onto you. When we are going to live a life of salvation, it means that we have this living faith that saves, that our life is going to have a transformation that's through grace from God, not from ourselves, but our part is to have faith with action, like GSKL, like our community, like those minorities, NGOs they are doing, is to really, ex like what James is mentioning here. He expects Christian will work for the benefit of others in need as a result of placing faith in Christ. Because we have faith in Christ, 
we do something, we go extra mile, we want to create something in our community that's beneficial to all of us. And I am very glad that we in JSKL is doing this. And for those who are watching us on the Zoom or from FB Live, or you are going to watch us in the future, we want to welcome you to join us and be part of us by contributing your talent, your time, or even your money to do something greater in Malaysia where all the cries of this marginalized community can have a safe space that they can come together, they can come safely, be who they are and have this protection and to have this abundant life that God has promised us. By having faith in actions, our faith is going to make complete mature. Our faith is going to bring profit and it will be seen by God and human will then be justified and called righteous. To be called friend of God, I think this is something so great that we could be a friend of God and because we are doing what God delights. And shall we pray? God, we thank you this time of sharing. It's all about you. It's all about your word as well as your enlightenment and your wisdom. And we are here and we want to have change in our life. We want to do something different. We want to have a life. We want to have this faith that is going to save us right now, that is going to have a transformative life. And we want to pray and we want to place our hand at our heart that you can lead us, guide us by questioning our faith. Because we, in JSK, we believe we have to know our church, we have to know ourselves first, and then we get to know you. As in the process of knowing you, we will be set free and want to get closer to you by knowing your heart. I want to give thanks and place our faith in action by prayer. We want to remind ourselves, we want to do meditation. We want to train our subconscious mind in order to be transformed. We want to be a transformer in our society. And I thank God that for those who willingly accept and take this wisdom message from God will be blessed in his name and in Jesus name I submit all of us GSKL and those who are watching into your hands you will bless our life as we follow you by bearing our cross to seek justice and seek your kingdom first and others shall be given to us in Jesus name we pray and you are saved